might I, write that one I up. legit did not do anything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Side by Side Guys Off-Road Podcast. I'm Big Z, and we are somewhere special. We are with some special guests. Uh, we're going to do a little round robin of uh, who we got here, but we are actually in the 212 uh, Performance Gloves Orange Crush Can-Am X3 Max Turbo XD ABCD EFG <laughs> with all the accessories. It's all the initials. It's all the things, yep. LGBTQ, yep. curious, whatever. Yep. Yep. And uh, we Plus. are <laughs> at UTV Takeover. Uh, Sand Hollow, Utah, 2021, and we're excited to be here. Uh, let's go ahead and do a round robin. You've been on the show before, Brent, but go ahead and introduce yourself to those that haven't heard that show. What up? Brent Gillum from uh, 2 and 2 Performance Gloves. We are here in uh, Orange Crush. Um, this is the most weight I've ever had inside the car. <laughs> are you saying I'm fat? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. He's, talking, he's talking about me, man. He's talking about me. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so Brent, you've been on the show before, um, a few episodes ago, uh, back from your hometown, uh, from your house. Uh, today we're actually together, getting to spend some time and, and show each other some love. So uh, who do we have here? Why don't you go ahead and introduce him and then... Uh, we have Chad Hall from uh, Deviant, one of the guys that builds all the suspension, we've, uh, suspension on the car. We've talked about his product in the past, how it's proven. Uh, these guys do a great job. Um, you know, helping me build components so we can send this thing for Huckfest and such there out of Quarter Lane, Idaho. Yep. Um, so My they, home turf, just yeah. right, out, right on the outside of the border of us from That's Mexico right. Yeah, yeah so yep. they made the truck down here, and uh, we're, we're looking to go give them a show with the with the product this weekend, so super pumped to have them here. Yeah, yeah so let's hear you. a little bit about you and, and, the, and the company. So I'm Chad Hall. Um, company started about 10 years ago. We started out in diesel performance, um, and uh, we, we kind of we had to make a switch after, you know, some – uh, governmental issues uh, right. everybody knows about um, so we uh, so we started doing we wanted to do something that we were enthusiastic about we're you know we're diesel guys but we're also UTV guys and and outdoors guys so we started uh, thinking about what we can do to change up some of the some of the things we're doing at Deviant we had all these machines and tools and we're like we love UTVs everybody has them at the shop I mean I think about three quarters of the guys at the shop have UTVs so we're like we could build parts. So we started building parts about two years ago. Um, two, th it's almost three years ago now, I think three years ago. Yeah. And, uh, so Zach, um, Not me. back here, yeah, this, this is Zach here. <laughs> this is, we got Zach, Zach, Zach Nabic, in the back. right. Uh, he, uh, he, uh, came back to work for us, uh, after a stint at a machine shop that he was, uh, that he, he, um, went to work for. And we're like, dude, we need some, we need some machinists and, and some, some parts going on. So he started, uh, kicking out parts for us and, We've got another guy, Chris Roscoe. He's my manager at the shop, and uh, he does all of the kind of like design and fabrication, um, like the prototyping stuff, and then Destry uh, does all of the hard like hard work. He's the guy that bends everything, does all the does all the really like high quality welds, everything else. But you know, a few of the guys at the shop are really cool. Uh, uh, um, <clears throat> sorry, um, Chris. He actually started out working at a machine shop in uh, for or in Tri Cities doing Hanford stuff. So I mean, you're well aware nuclear of the site. nuclear yeah. site, right? So he's building like nuclear containment stuff. He's what? got like, oh yeah, I didn't know that. <clears throat> yeah, so he's rocket yeah, scientist so yeah, so he was building stuff that is way beyond the stuff that we deal with, you know, in these things. Right. Um. So fully certified he's done everything you dude, know the dude's cool man I, I, like you know one thing i love about them is like every time i call or reach out or anything like it's just you're it's so welcoming when they talk to me like it's just so easy like hey i, I was kind of you know interested in this and that and they're like oh yeah dude you know no problem let's look at this and like you guys it's such a like uh you know the camaraderie at your guys' shop is yeah. like it's 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 one to nothing they're just they're amazing dudes you we know? all we work together really good. I mean, you know, having Brent come out and doing the, all, a lot of the testing, you know, we do the testing that we have, but we're not, we don't have dunes where we live, right? You're, right. you're Spokane. Well, you, you do down south, but that's a Yeah, I mean, but drive. it's eight hours yeah. to go to, to, go to <laughs> St. Anne's. So, so we, all of our stuff is out in the woods, you know, right. so we beat it up out there and then we, but we don't have desert. But you're so not we're not, we're not, we're not hucking, not you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh -uh. And... So it's nice to have, it's nice to have like, the guys like this, you know, we these these athletes that are that are out here doing the. You were just the, called an really, athlete, bro. You got to start working out. 
I know. Well, I mean, he is, he is, he is a little. <laughs> he was skinny back in the day. I don't know what happened. Dude, but. I got married, and my wife keeps feeding me. <laughs> She's just like, you know, if we keep you fat, no girls will get in your car. I'm like, probably yeah. right. <laughs> You're probably right. No. So real quick, uh, let's get Zach on here. Uh, Zach, give us a little bit of your background and, and what your position is. All right, Zach Nemec, um, machinist at Deviant Race Parts. I'm uh, kind of a one-man show as far as the machining side of it goes, so I do all the anything machine part-wise, all the design, prototyping, drawing up, uh, whatever it is there. So you're and not just a grunt in the shop. You're you're also actually engineering these products. Yes. Yep. Yep. On all the on all all the machined side stuff. Obviously, all the fab stuff was Chris Industry, like Chad was already saying, but. Yeah, so I do that, then all the programming. So pretty much every step from, hey, let's make this part to uh, finish production part, I do every step of the way on all, all of our machine stuff. Um, so, where, so where do you get your start in something like that where, you know, a lot of us as consumers, we see these products as just an end result, uh, but we don't understand there's a whole bunch of education, there's a whole bunch of experience, there's a whole bunch of uh, industry knowledge, there's a whole bunch of things that come together to equate to that one part that you bought. Um, kind of give us that background and how that works out. Um, well, I started, I mean, started as a high school job, you know, 14, 15 years old, just as a shop hand sweeping floors at a machine shop and then, uh, led, led to, uh, just doing more there and, and then I liked it. So I did all that through high school all the way up until I graduated. I was in the army for six and a half years, got out medically for that and then came back, worked for Chad briefly at Alligator at the time. And then uh, I just came out from being, you know, infantry in the army and doing all this. I, I couldn't sit at a desk, realized that after six months. So I uh, went to went back to that same machine shop I, I was at in high school and worked there for like another three years, learning more and more. And then opportunity came up to came back to uh, come back to Chad's and take over all that. And so really, it's just been from working. I haven't gone to school or anything for it. It's all just between work and job and then kind of just self-taught. The opportunity came up with this, had to learn it, had to make it all happen. So just right. kind of figured it all as I went. So. so there's a lot to be said for the trade industry, right? And and there are some trades that you do have to go to school and get some engineering degrees on, but there's a lot of things that you can learn and be productive and make a living off of just with your hands and the experience and the time you put in. Yeah, ab absolutely. If, if you want it bad enough, you can get it. You know, it, 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 like I was telling you guys earlier, when I when we built this thing, I, I had never fabricated anything in my life. Like, I've watched my brother build race cars and everything, so I was like, yeah, well, you know, we built the rear cage out and the front cage on this, so I was like, let me take a stab at it. And I wasted so much money in tubing trying to figure out how to bend tubing and stuff, like... I had a newfound respect for fabricators and machinists. So I was like, "Wow, it's a it's a talent." Like the stuff Wilkie does is is amazing. amazing. Yeah. yeah, amazing. Shout out to Wilkie and his TT bug. I yeah. can't wait to see that bad boy. I'm ready, dude. I can't <laughs> wait. I'm like, I'm ready to drive that thing, dude. <laughs> yeah, that thing's insane. Yep. So, uh, Chad, talk a little bit about um, where you came from as far as a business goes. Uh, you know, Deviant Race Parts are 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 you're building your your community knowledge and 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 um, experience and all that stuff. But you come from a background of, you know, actual performance manufacturing. Kind of give us that background history so we can kind of know where, where this all comes from. Well, 10 years ago, we started building parts. I actually was more than that. It's 11 years now. Deviant's been a business since 2010. Um, we got into the diesel performance stuff. So we started manufacturing, you know, parts uh, for diesel pickups. So, okay. Like, just give us an example of a list of parts that would be... So we do... Uh, our almost like our biggest selling part is transmission repair lines for LBZ Duramaxes. So like 06 to, you know, like, like 06 LBZ LMM trucks, they're notoriously like horrible for having leaking transmission lines. So you'll, you'll have this truck. It's got, you know, 50,000 miles on it, pulling in the garage. Now it's leaking tranny fluid. Um, so we started building those and then, um, started, and then we started, we, we, I actually invented, uh, the billet cap for a resonator plug for uh, for Duramax. It's like nobody had ever had one. They were using crutch tips, like legit two dollar crutch tips with like a hose clamp on it. On right. a on a, it's like the mouthpiece of the turbo. I've seen the Coors Light cans cut. And <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> so we started. So we really started small. Like it was like it was a couple of parts, and I believe in you our were solving problems one at a time. That's what I was doing. Yeah, it was just little problem here, little problem there. Tie rod sleeves for Duramaxes. We were doing. Um, geez, we have like. 150 part numbers, I think the Deviant line has. So we started out doing doing that transmission lines, billet parts, um, 
then we started doing some stuff that the government didn't like. So we uh, <laughs> we, we had our we had our hand. I think with, the whole industry and community yeah, were doing it, things you know, they didn't like. Yeah. yeah. So so we kind of just you guys. Yeah. So we got our hand slapped, you know, um, and 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 learned a really uh, well, really a really expensive lesson, right? right. It's yeah. like attorney's fees and and two years of life and all this gray that's in my beard. Um, you know, so we went through all of that, and then um, I don't know what else do we do. We we have like tons of fabricated parts. Like so we still do like intake elbows for uh, for LB sevens. We do them for for the twelve valve Cummins, which is a huge seller for us. You know, we're still maintaining the the uh, grid heater, which is an emissions device. So we we maintain that in that part. Um, yeah, fuel sumps are seller. huge. Yeah, yeah. So, still new. It's funny because they'll send me any parts I need for the Can Am, and I'm like, "Hey, my Dodge needs this." And he's like, "Nope." <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. Yeah, that's a, no, no, that's a, that's a whole lot of no. We we, we try to stay <laughs> as far away from that stuff. I mean, I even had a guy. So I was getting my oil changes at the Ford dealership, right? So I have free oil changes there uh, since I bought the truck, and so I, I went over there, dropped it off, went to pick it up, and the and one of the techs is like, "Hey, listen." Um, I need a EGR delete for my 6.4 uh, Ford, and I'm like, yeah, I can't even talk to you. Sorry, about that. what? What'd you say? I, yeah, I, I, don't understand. I was like, yeah. he's Spanish, like, he's like, what do you mean you're you're alligator guy, right? I'm like, yeah, well, <laughs> not anymore. I'm actually, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm the legally, alligator guy, but... legally re- like required not to talk to you about that stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm like, I can't talk. He's like, what do you, what do you mean? Like, that's crazy. So wow. Um, anyways, tell, tell us a little bit of the the backstory on that. I mean, you're, you're we're saying the EPA whatever read it right, but it's actually like an actual like threat to the industry like they just came down strong hammered on everybody they did you even talk about it you even like correlate with these things so the so the epa like in in 2020 they they came out with uh one of their major programs which is they're going after violators of uh the clean air act um and primarily in the diesel industry so that was their like their big deal there's you know you have you've got guys that it's the YouTube thing where it's rolling coal and black smoke everywhere, and yep. and it makes us look bad. You know what I mean? As a, as an industry, and so they have a so 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. Like that's their primary enforcement task force, right? Is diesel and performance motorsports for vehicles, and so those guys, they they came out really strong. Like you know, you had your initial 2008, 9, 10 Edge, H and S, that kind of stuff that was happening in the diesel stuff. Um, and then it kind of like went silent for a couple of years. You didn't really hear right. hear much. And, and uh, I think last year there was 55 companies or something like that yeah. that got that got like enforced on. And it's not and, just like small little companies doing yeah. stuff. It's like I mean even like celebrity people like Diesel Power Products and like yep. all those different companies are now in the spotlight because the EPA right. is like everybody right. under the gun. Yep, everybody. Oh, yeah. It doesn't it it doesn't matter who you are. Uh, there was just a a, a deal um, kind of in down south where um, it's a single guy, uh, actually he's married, but it's just a one, one man show, out of the military, was in the Air Force for 16 years. And um, there was like 10 guys showed up with like guns, bulletproof vests, yes, everything. everything. Because that's a, th- a threat to our freedom. So, you know, right. and, and appropriate <laughs> response. Like I don't, I, 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 I don't quite understand that aspect of it. Like right. what, what they needed to show up, you know, fully freaking, right. you know decked out you know like teamed up like um you know i i've got to say that uh, i wasn't at the shop when the epa showed up at our shop originally um we were actually on our way to another event and um it was just a couple guys that came in they were actually pretty nice from my understanding they came in took pictures did all the stuff um and uh and then you know we waited like 18 months and then we got an rfi and then went through the whole process and that took two years yeah, California doesn't mess around now. They have random um, diesel checkpoints they yeah. set up on the roads. Yep. Like or just the public? Yes. Yeah. Like you'll be driving down the road and it looks like you're pulling in like a DUI checkpoint, dude, and they have a, like a full smog truck and like the CHP like just is literally flagging down diesels pulling you in there. Yep. Like it, and it's a ten thousand dollar fine and they impound the truck. Ten grand? Yeah. Yeah, and then you gotta and then you gotta pay to get it all that stuff put back. And on they're the like truck. throwing the sensors yeah. up the pipe and everything? Everything, dude. Everything they yeah. hook up to the OBD two ch- yeah. like pop the hood like they go through it, dude. I'm like Crazy. I got nailed yeah. when I first bought my RAM and like I literally the truck was brand new, paper plates on it. And I'm like eight o'clock in the morning rolling down the road on a highway and you know 
survey, they had like the surveyor signs up and they flagged me in, CHP did, and I'm like, what's going on? And they're like, oh, this is a, yeah. you know, an EPA smog check. And I'm like, oh, and then the, the guy's like, you know, pop your hood. And I'm like, okay. And then they looked and there was no plates on it. And they're like, is this a brand new truck? I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh, no plates. All right, you're free to go. I'm like, what is this? Like, yeah. what, <laughs> like what's happening right now, dude? And he's like, oh, we're looking for this, this, and that. And I was like, whoa, because I have a ton of buddies that, Right. You know, have performance stuff on their truck, not to roll coal or like yeah. you know, be idiots yep. out there, but to get the, the gas mileage out of it when they're towing. Sure. Like, just uh, those diesels are so restricted. Like, you can do a couple things to them and make them run way more efficient. Yep. That isn't bad for the environment. So it's like it's kind of a double standard, right? Like, yeah. You know, you can make your truck way more efficient, get better gas mileage, and be make it more of a green diesel. And and you can't do that because of the guys that have ruined it. And there's a lot of cool. uh, guys that do the greasel conversions and all this other stuff. And those limitations actually screw them over too. Yeah, well, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. So you're you know when you put say a, a 2006 LBZ Duramax into a into a truck or a, a, an 06 Cummins or whatever, and it's say it's a 1950, you know, you've got to meet emissions requirements for the 06. So if it had an EGR on it, if it had uh, a cat, on you got to follow it. it. Yeah, they've got they're supposed to. Yeah. So just because you put it in an older car doesn't mean you don't have to follow the emissions for that engine. Yeah, that's right? crazy. Yeah, I so. thought it was based off the VIN of the car. Nope. Really? In California, is a little bit different, though. Like, you you guys only smog check back to, like, tw- like 25 years or something like that. Yeah, for like, 77, I think. Yeah. So, Ooh. you know, but, you know, at the end of the day, if you had, like, a 68 Nova, right, and you put a, a 2013 6M Cummins in it, right? you technically are supposed to have all those emissions on it. Right. So, I mean, and I think that's going to end up into, into this industry. You know what I mean? You've right. got, you've got uh, you know, almost all these cars have cats on them. Well, right? dude, in, Cal- in their California is trying to el- like make anything. Off-road vehicles illegal, basically. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. anything that's uh, a 1,000 cc's or under is well, they're be banning banned. two strokes, right? right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Two, like you can't even have a weed whacker that's two right. stroke. Like it's getting wild. And now it's like generators, uh, lawnmowers, that kind of stuff. All the small engine stuff is going is going to have to go south. Right? And we're looking so, at you know possibly seeing some new cars by, next week that have bigger motors and displacement yep. and things like that. And and so there's just going to be a whole bunch of new regulatory push by these OEs, right? Yep. yep. And they need a new space to operate within, so they're going to need new rules but, and all this stuff. And so like you were saying, you know the performance side of that is going to be affected. There's going to be some sort of repercussion for you know, balancing the, the scales with yeah. the EPA and everything else, at, especially with California. At some point, I mean, you've, you've got to look at, you've got to look at it as a, as an industry, right? So we're in this industry and, and looking at performance parts like you do, you know, exhaust or you do something like these have cats in the, in the front pipe, right? So between the turbo and the muffler. When does it? Um, well, yours is a, ra- <laughs> yours, yours, we'll, we'll yours is a race car though, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. It's yours, not- is a, yours is a race car. That's like, and, and it's a technical race car and you guys actually have in California, which is kind of neat. They don't have it in, in any other state, but you actually can go in and get a paper that says this is a race car. Well, you know, what's crazy. You is get like, an exemption because right? I bought this in California. It has all the, um, all the, uh, the fuel, what's it called? EVAP stuff. Yes. Yeah. All dude, the EVAP stuff on this thing is like a crazy amount of weight on my car and I can't take it out. Like, does it have a canister? Oh yeah. 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 Oh wow. Dude, yeah. it's a huge unit. And I'm like, if I'd have bought this in Arizona, it's like 15 pounds of equipment that I wouldn't have had on the car. Right. And I can't take it out. Like, uh, like I've no guys that have taken it out and it ruins how the car runs. Right. Because you have to completely re- yep. reflash yeah. it and replace a bunch of stuff. Not yeah. just reflash. It's probably, it's probably hard parts. It's, it's, there's it's, a whole yeah, way you're that, rebuilding that thing. It. Yeah. Yeah. So, it doesn't really. It doesn't really make sense, um, you know. And to, there's to actually. I don't that. know if people really have a good insight on it. There's a push to uh, limit what race cars can do too. Yes. And, well, that's, that's the RPM Act. I don't know if, if if any of you guys watching, dude, hit your hit your senators up, hit your congressmen up, go in and uh, go to uh, the. It's I think it's on SEMA and it's uh, yeah it's, SEMA sponsoring yeah, it. So SEMA sponsoring it. And, Protect and then, our yep, race. Yep. Whatever. So there's basically a, you know you want to go in. Send an email to your to your senator. Tell them, hey, listen, we we need to protect race cars, right? Like, proactively, we need to be doing this instead uh, uh, of re- reacting to yeah, it after it happened. Yeah, and and you know, it right now it's like the the primary focus is like automotive, right? It's not, you know, the the side by sides, the the ATVs, the motorcycles, right? That's where it's going. 
Yeah. yeah. That's it, you know, it's going there. Yeah, we're going to have electric NASCARs, dude. Like yeah. who wants to watch that? Yeah, do you see that? <laughs> they they're, they're going to be hybrids. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I was like that doesn't sound I mean, on one hand, <laughs> they're going to go hella fast and I'm really excited about <laughs> they that. Are, but, but, <laughs> but, they, but, but they make no noise. It's like right. why do you want to right. I don't know speakers have you, in I mean, have you, they go by. Yeah, <laughs> have you have you looked at the uh the uh what is it the F1 cars that are doing electric? Yeah, right. Yeah. And you and you they they don't sound quiet. It's quiet. Yeah. Which is which is I guess nice, you know, for you know, noise and stuff. Then you can race in residential areas. I guess you can. <laughs> yeah. There's a cool yeah. roundabout over here with some obstacles. I think we should try. <laughs> Let's go drifting, right? Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, half the fun of NASCAR is like the first time you go there and experience the cars going by and your organs shake. You're like, oh, my God, there's so much horsepower going right. by. Like, who wants to hear well, electric like cars? My, like, my boys going to the drag strip and getting oh, yeah. the nitros at that's the launch pad, right? Yeah. Like, that's an amazing experience. Yeah. Or going to yeah. NHRA and, yep. and the, you know, the top fuel cars. Yep. Like, it, that feeling. You're I remember being that. like the first time I ever went was in Vegas when they opened up the track in Vegas, right? Four wide? Uh, no, it was two wide. Oh. This is way back. Like, okay. I actually did work at the track in Vegas. Remember how great his hair is. And, uh, oh, well, <laughs> yeah, way, way back. back. Like, 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 <laughs> well, I knew he worked in Vegas, but that was at Chippendales. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, was, I have a whole story about like, we go back on that. You know, that he was Magic like, Mike's trainer, right? I for was, that yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh. No, I did not. No, that's, that's, <laughs> that is a total lie. So, so, anyways, going there, and, and I remember parking my truck out in the parking lot. And in, in Vegas, you have an alarm on your truck back in the day, that's what you did, right? And I remember my alarm was going off from the top fuel cars driving by, right. like, yeah. that's like that experience, like, you can't get that from electric. No, no. But the issue is, is that's where we're going. I mean, right. it's going to be electric, hydrogen. It's going to, be, it's going to be something that is uh, an alternative fuel. And at some point, we all have to get on board with that too, right? Yeah. So, I mean, you've got a few of these cars that are coming out electric. I, you know, it worries me because it's not, it's not easy. You can't just go throw Flip a switch, yeah. yeah, throw a tank of fuel in and 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 be done. You got to actually go back and let it charge. Well, you like, have to plan your rides. You got to plan. It's like those those diesel generator plants for Teslas. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're like, wait a minute, this well, is defeating the purpose. <laughs> I think what's interesting is, I mean, for you as a as a suspension manufacturer and component manufacturer, yep. um, there's actually a lot of open doors for you because now we're talking about heavier cars. We're talking about yep, lower right. center of gravity. Yep. We're talking about a lot of things that put a lot of stress on those yep. components specifically, right? So there is going to be a lot of engineering um, coming up, and so like Zach, when you're when you're looking at the possibility of a car going from eighteen hundred to twenty two hundred pounds to up to maybe three thousand pounds, you know what comes into your head as far as like how am I going to approach the next series of products? Uh, I mean, at that point, it just gets overbuilt. If we start looking at it, you know that's why we do a lot of testing on our parts too, like you know our radius rod plates with the hooks and all that. You know we've done all the testing on those and seeing what everything breaks at so same thing with um some of our links for the suspension components and all that doing all the testing we can do so it just you know makes us have to do that again and yeah, so beef it all up we're not just you know building the part and 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 going through like the the regular engineering schematics in the in the uh in the in the cab programs right like they have like their own <clears throat> their own like schematic that will that'll be like, okay, this is a got a stress point, this has a stress point, this is where it's gonna be weakest at. We're actually going out and uh like our pole plate, that was kinda cool. Um we have a, a testing facility of uh just a street over from us and, and we're in a pretty big industrial area and, and uh so we're like this is gonna break we we were thinking maybe ten thousand, twelve yeah, thousand pounds. The highest anyone said was maybe fifteen. Yeah, and so we and started it's all billet aluminum. It's all billet, yeah. Right. Six, it's our six plate one, with yeah. the hook with the two M ten bolts coming in from the rear. Yeah. So we were we were testing the strength of the hook, you know, thread stripping out, whatever it is. You know, if we're on the uh rear getting pulled out, whatever you're doing, towing you need to someone. Know you're gonna be able yeah. to pull on. Right. So we said, I think it was like 23. It was like 21, I think yeah, 20, 21, yeah, 20 21, something. 5, something like that. But it was the pounds. bolt shearing. It, yeah, wasn't, it had nothing to do, there was no deformate, deformation in the in the aluminum, nothing in, in any of the, the actual engineering that we did. It was that the, the bolt head broke off. Really? Left the threads in the, in the D-ring. And um, you're like, that's weird. So we're like, cool, let's go pick a car up. So right. a buddy yeah. of mine, we, we did a video. Um, and he just got a new car. Uh, this is like 2018, I guess, 18. Yeah, winter 18, 19. So it's like he owns an excavation company. And uh, Zwinger Excavating, if anybody is in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, they uh, have one <laughs> of the best excavating companies there. Um, anyways, uh, so he's like, I'll just pick this up. Yeah. So took his took his big old uh, 320 excavator and dragged the thing right off the ground, picked it up, just like sat there. Yeah. And like if you can – 
imagine picking a you know it's not they're not heavy cars but but it's dead weight on a yeah, single it's point. dead weight on a single point yeah and you know put it back down and it, away it goes that that From part like is, what set eight bolts like it's pretty impressive. It's well, just the four mounting on the razor and, and then just the two, two, two on the six. Yeah. So it was a razor? Yeah, yeah it, was it was a razor. razor. It was a so it's not even turbo. like the Can-Am where it's six points. It's, it's right. right, it's four points, yeah. Right. So, so I know, I, dude, I know when I was in, after seeing that video, I was in Glamis last year, and my buddy sank his Funko. And uh, they, we had to, like, daisy chain cars together to pull him out because he was the only sand rail in the group. Yeah. His car's, you know, 1,800 horsepower. If he couldn't get out of it, right. like I'm like, oh, this is going to be rough. And the guys were hooking up to my cage because it's chromoly. And I was like, do not hook to the cage. I'm like, hook to the pole plate. They're yeah. like, no, we're going to hook to chromoly. I'm like, dude, no, that thing's 20,000 pounds tested. Hook to that thing right there. And I, dude, with a run, slammed him like five or six times, dude, pulled him out. Zero issues. Didn't yeah, even, right. It didn't even phase yeah. it. You know, it's like, it's it's top notch. I'm not going to lie. Your, your, your guys' quality, you know, the quality of your guys' product is just it's right well, up there. We have a, a racer um, out of Vegas, Brooklyn Denman, uh, Demon, um, and uh, she runs a bunch of our parts on her car, and that's one of the things she has. Um, and she, uh, like, I guess, so we do it a little differently. Everybody's like, runs the bolts all the way through, and you got nuts on the backside, and we're, we're running the, the high strength nut certs in the back. Um, and he was a little skeptical of it. And I mean, they ran like, they just ran a race three weeks ago, the best in the desert races. That's what they run. So running the same thing that we're running in these cars, all of our off the shelf stuff, they're running the same parts. Um, some of the stuff that we do for them is a little bit different. Like they need some, some more higher, you know, higher strength, uh, things that, that can go through the abuse that desert racing right. takes you, yeah. right? Like these are, you know. And, uh, yeah, so anyone that doesn't that's watching that doesn't know about desert racing, you cannot take a stock side by side and go race a desert race. No, the car will fall yeah, apart. No, not, at, not at winning speed. No, yeah. no, you know you could. I mean, but it would just take. Yeah, it, it would, would take a long time. Yeah, yeah. And, or if you tried to go at winning speed, the car would literally disintegrate. Yeah, like, right. It's, it's they're just they're just not those parts are not meant to do that kind of stuff. They're meant right. to go out and enjoy the recreating. Right. right. They're not yeah. meant to be racing. Yep. Um. So, anyways, so they were they 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 were taking uh they, sorry rethinking here they had an axle brake right a rear axle brake and uh i get a call um the next day after they're on their way home from the race and he's like you saved us 30 minutes in an axle change in the rear from just having your your pole plate designed the way it was because otherwise we were just dicking around with bolts and now i can just so what about it is saving time well it so on uh, on the factory plates, you've got you've got six bolts, yep. six nuts. So you got to get a wrench in, and there's no like hardly any room in the no. back of that to get to get zero. Like yeah. my, I have little hands, dude. I wear a medium glove. I cannot get my hands back there. No, put those nuts and on. if you drop one, right? Yeah, good luck. <laughs> and, and well, the like the stock ones, they're like on a springed like plate. So right. when you pull the plate off, the bolts go, the studs go like this. Yeah. So to line those back up, you're like it's a, right, yeah. it's a nightmare. Like it right is. now, literally six bolts, pop, 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 pop. They come right off. Put it back on, right back into the inserts. It's yeah. like it's it's really race friendly. It is, yeah. It's really it, and that's and that's the way we designed it. And he was he was so stoked when he got back. He was like he was a little worried about. It. He's like I don't know whether that's going to work or not. And I'm like, uh, well, we you know we've got the struts in between. You know we make it strong. Um, and then when he when he came back, he called me. He was like 30 minutes on the phone. He's like, dude, that was the best thing ever. That was like that was great. It was very smart, um, and it saved us 30 minutes. Like that that gained us two places in this race, right? <laughs> Yeah, sec- I, seconds win, right? Yeah, absolutely. So when you know, and then when you talk about minutes, right, that's yeah. huge, huge, right? Yeah. So it, it's kind of neat to see that, and and our actual product. I mean, it the, what she has on the back of her car is the same thing you have on the back of your car is the same thing that our customers are getting. Guy off our website's getting yeah, same thing. Yeah, they're getting the same thing, and it's and it does make things easier. So when we're looking at stuff, we're trying to we're not only trying to make it we've got to make it cost effective for us to make right. it so that we can make money so that and and we're a manufacturer so we have we have dealers right so they've got to make their money yeah and then we've got to give and we've got to get it to you the the, the consumer at a at a competitive price right well that's one thing i love about this company is like not only is their product like top shelf it's not overly expensive you know what I mean? The average Joe can afford to buy product from them and put it on their car. Well, and you're buying it once too. Yeah. Right. Uh, yes. Like I've had these A arms in my the shock tower brace on my car for 2,500 miles, and they're proven. I've jumped this thing to the moon. But and everybody, everybody's seen this car at swing set, right? Like yeah. You, you, yeah, dude. I'm like, remember I called you? I was like, dude, we hooked swing set. It was fine. No right. issues. Yeah. Like 
slam the front of it. And that was that was the that was it. Dude, you hucked it. Like that, I was like, holy, dude, I showed all of my buddies. Like, shut this shit out. Oh, yeah. so, my wife was a little upset about that one. <laughs> well, I, I, she's not upset about the material. It's you, right? Yeah, she yeah. doesn't want to see you hurt. I mean, what are you, 67 broken bones you've had? Uh, apparently, you know, I can't walk downstairs without falling. So she's yeah. like, I don't know if you should jump the car like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, a properly set car, right? And, and yes. proper thought process about what you're doing and not just trying to impress people will keep you together a hundred percent i mean yeah. we i was testing this thing all week in the mindset that i wanted to attempt that if everything looked good you know right. what i mean so i was jumping it tuning it so the car would jump level like it's very hard to get a four seat can am to jump level you yeah. know it's such a long car and um you know when we got there there were some dirt bikes hitting that jump and i was like well, let me go talk to those moto guys i used to race like i know the speed on a dirt bike to jump in glamis Sure enough, they're like, oh, yeah, fourth gear mid-throttle. I took a couple runs at it, and I was like, I'm going to go talk to the wife. I think I'm going to hit this thing. <laughs> and she gave me the green light, so yeah. I was like, all right, let's do it. Shout out to the wifey for the approval. Yeah, yeah no kidding. Thanks, it, it, it was definitely impressive. It was definitely impressive, and, and uh, I'm, I'm just glad that we, you know, we know that what we're building is good, right? Yeah. But then to go see it do stuff like that or at LACR, and he's just, like, completely just being an idiot. Right, <laughs> and then watch him come back. He's like, "Yeah, everything's good." And I'm like, "Sweet," you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I, it it makes me feel good. You know what I mean? And and my guys will be like, "Oh, hey, you just got chatted, right?" Like that is a thing at my shop. Uh, ch oh, chatted, huh? You got yeah. chatted, yeah. right? Hashtag chatted. And he's like, "You're and 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 Chris especially like you're way overbuilding this." I'm like, "I'd rather overbuild it than underbuild it, right?" So you know when we go out and, and build stuff, they're like, "Oh, wait, you want me to do that now?" I'm like, "Yeah, absolutely. You want to? I want to do that." And they're like. You don't need to. I'm like, I don't care. Yeah, like, that, wasn't, that was never the question. Yeah, that was never the question. <laughs> Just let's let's build stuff that you can buy it once, right? Buy it right the first time. You don't have to go back and 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 uh, you know have failure after failure after failure. You know what I mean? There's some wear parts. You know, when you don't have to do revisions over and over. Right. Oh, dude. I mean, well, this arm that's on his car has been like we we had we we went through like three revisions on this lower. I think from from the beginning. And uh, we took some weight out. We had we had it in, in a there was a V shape for the for the brace, the structural brace that goes across like the, the um, between the the middle of the of the A arm. And uh, we're like, that's overkill. We don't really need that. So Chris, is like, I think I can do it this way. And coming from his background of building like stuff to hold nuclear stuff and, and like <laughs> actual uh, pressurized components outside of the nuclear stuff, he's like this is going to work. And so, you know, I have to, I have to trust in him to be like, Hey, listen, you're overbuilding this, overthinking it, you know, but the other, you know, at the end of the day, I've got to make sure that those parts are going to go through. We don't know what these are, these parts are going on. I mean, they could be on this guy's car, right? right? And, and he's an, he's an animal. He'll, he will wreck anything. I mean, as you can tell, like shit on his car is like <laughs> cracked and broken. And you're like, I dude, mean, it's not a show car. I mean, it shows well, but yeah. we, we, I built it to run it. Like, it's a tool, yeah. you know. So we, so <laughs> you have a pretty shell. It, it, it is, a, yeah, a riding it, shell. Yeah. <laughs> but I like doing that and and making sure that our parts are right and they and they work well. And obviously, we're not the only one in the industry. We're a newcomer to the to the industry as far as the the side by side stuff goes. But it's not like we don't have eleven years of history building parts for things that are five times as heavy as this. So right? so let's talk about the new stuff that's coming out. What, what's what's in the works for Deviant? Ooh, we got some secrets. Some bolt on parts that we're waiting for. For you, yeah, for the industry, you know, uh, well, we, you know, we've got a full line of cages that we're not, they're not even on our website. So we're, we, we, we do cages. We'll do them out of either regular a billet cage. Can I get a billet cage? <laughs> not, not billet. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> if, if, you, if, if you want to, I mean, I could, I could hire a machine shop that has a, a big enough freaking CNC to do a cage. I need like a twelve that, foot CNC table. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah dude, they make like, yeah, yeah. They, they, they do. The actual CNC so manufacturer. I, I, yeah, so, so I was, at, I was them. at Mazak. So that's the machine we we have a Mazak CNC. So that and that's what we run. So I went to their their factory um, in Cincinnati, just outside of Cincinnati. It was actually in Kentucky, but went over there and I was looking at the machines that they have building their machines, and like <laughs> there's some that take up. They're like fifty by a hundred. Right. Whoa. Right? Like, these, oh, these yeah. machines are just huge. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, if if, uh, if somebody wanted to, like, donate a couple, <laughs> you know, $10 million to me to, to buy a machine that big, I'll build a bill cage, but no. I think we can um, start a whole new industry. <laughs> yeah. So I, I I have heard talk of, what, upper control arms that are coming out? So, we, so we, we've we already got uppers. We're, really? we're, we're in prototype huh. stuff. For, really? We, yeah. Hmm. 
We <laughs> we're just we're not we're so uppers trailing arms. Yeah. Um. You know all the all the basics th- that stuff. Um, but that takes a that, you know those those are a little bit harder parts to no. to, to make work right. hundred oh, percent. I mean, so, you guys aren't a huge you know we shop. You don't have no huge no, that's, no that's seriously. We have, there's it's five guys. Yeah, right? like so it's, the amount it's, of time it takes to develop one yeah. of those things is it's big. Right? That's so, what I was gonna say. Is people always think we're a little bit bigger than we are. We we all work well together, but we are at the moment, and that's just uh you know a newer guy, Josh, as of a few months ago. So I mean, we were a four man show for the last what three four yeah four years or yeah. so. It's not. We're not. It's not a big company. It's a. It's a very small company. We take up sixty five hundred square feet in a shop. So we don't. We have limited space. And then we also have. We also have. You know, we're we we we're purchased through like WPS and 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 stuff like that. So they. So when they make a stocking order, I've got to take guys off a prototype into right. building the actual products that are going on these cars. Right. Well, they, so, they run a pretty tight ship too. Like they're one of the 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 smaller manufacturers that doesn't have like long lead times. Like he's. They're very organized in what they do, and like they take care of their product enough to get it out to the consumer. Like, uh, there's you know, right now with all the shipping delays and like getting raw materials, it's really hard to get product for side by side. Like, there's so many guys I know that have bought cars this season and are just parked waiting on parts, you know, because of raw materials. It's not the manufacturer's fault, but they do a great job at like forecasting to see that to get. To take care of their needs for their customers. And speaking right. of the of the raw, raw materials, there's a very few, there's a very small number of manufacturers that actually, for one, make them in the United States, Correct. don't outsource it. Correct. But two, source their materials and engineering here in the states. Yeah. Right. So like, from what I've been told, most of your material and and acquisition is actually local to the states. Right. Yeah. So we 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 source U.S. still. It's more expensive. And I don't know that anybody knows or not, but like steel prices have gone up like four, <laughs> five, up. six times. So if we're eating that cost. I mean, we can only pass so much on to the consumer, but like you guys need to understand that when we're buying steel, like that went up, I, I think, five times. I, I think, think that's. I think that's, plywood's it, more expensive than steel right now, right? It's, it's, it's finally <laughs> it's, come back down some, but steel's uh, three, three to four times yeah, what, consistently. What it was, and aluminum is aluminum's the same thing. Yep. You know, we try to hold off on, like, price increases. We hate price increases. Like, yep. I don't want to, like, charge more, but at some point when I'm, you know, taking a 25% hit on a product, we've gotta, I've got to pay my guys, right? Yep. My most important, like, uh, like, ideology is take care of my guys, right? Because right. my guys got to they, – they have to – they have – families they have houses they have cars they have hobbies they have all those things i've got to make sure that they're they're paid well so that they can go out and enjoy the stuff that we're doing right now right i mean he's here he's you know he's had what four side by sides in the last uh three four years oh yeah three in the last three, three yeah. years so Wait, you, they, you and, know. and it's not that we're overpaying and so you guys can have a fleet of no no no, no. Toys, he, no he he quality buys work it, expensive uh, no yeah so uh, and that's not it's he has he never has more than one, but he'll he'll buy one. He gets tired of it. I want to build. I want a new build. So he goes and does something different, you know. And I mean, they get paid a, a good salary. I mean, there's I you can't have good product with paying guys ten bucks an hour, right? Right. Yeah. So pay for what you get, right? That, that's it. And um and so yeah, so our aluminum is sourced in the U.S. That's all U.S. The only things that we can't like get U.S. sources is, is like nuts and bolts and you know stuff like that that i mean if we were it would be stupid expensive so yeah, no no one wants to pay for a ten dollar screw that no right so so i mean and, and those are the same bolt nuts and bolts you're getting in everybody else's kits really yeah. you know so we try to source that we but we, it's not a it's not a cheap sourced you know pallet of uh, bolts of from course, china no it's, it's no it's not no we everything we get is actually fast and all i mean it's 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 high quality grade eight grade eight, eight yeah. it, you know they're they're all it's all good stuff so we don't we don't cheap out on anything in that in that side of things um and then even our cnc machine with mazak built in kentucky right so it's a u.s machine right it's a it's a japanese company right yeah but, once once they merge but yeah still still built in the, that machine specifically is built, built in, in the u.s so we you know we take pride in that and then you know zach is ex-military uh josh our new guy is ex-military um, Thanks for your service, by the way, bro. Yeah, dude. Well, if you if you actually knew what he what I mean, he's what it he's makes been sense. through, he has that like you know that that's that's calming like 
I, yeah. I don't know that calming look. That's kind of scary. Like if I look <laughs> in your eyes, I'm like, well, you're you're looking at a, you're, you're by, looking yeah. at a God's honest Purple Heart recipient, right? Yeah. Like this guy is is a war hero. Yeah. This is one of the guys that we talk about and that we should be celebrating. Right. That's awesome, dude. So. Yeah. No, I love that. Mad respect, bro. Like I come Man. from a big military family. Like my grandpa, World War II veteran, Purple Heart. You know, Korea, Purple Heart. Like a lot of my my family went and you know served for our country. So you know. I, I respect that a lot. And, and in this, you know, time period that our country's in, it, it it needs to be said more often. It does. Yeah, absolutely. It really does. Yeah. With first responders too, you know, like yep. it's 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 sad to say that we're 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 in a, in a part in a country where like, you know, being a policeman is a like not a, a great. Yeah, you're job. not proud of it. Like you, right. you you oh, I'm a police you're officer. You're scared to you say get, what you do. Right. But, but that all depends on the locale, though, right? right yeah. Like if you're you know in in different areas. Shout like, out to Idaho for being right, awesome. One hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just shout out to first responders in general. Dude. Yeah. They got a hey, rough job. So speaking them. of that, talk a little bit about your glove thing you got going on. Um, that's that's something that's from a number of years ago, but is still applicable today. Yeah. So, um, you know, at 212, we have the um, the Vegas Strong Glove. So we take blank gloves. They're the branded with the Vegas Strong logo. Um, since the shooting at Mandalay, uh, basically this program, we donate all the gloves. And, the, and anyone that purchases the gloves, we donate all the proceeds from those to Vegas first responders. Cool. So that's awesome. That's, that's still an active program that we do today. And it's it's been really popular, you know. So we've we've been able to donate a ton of money back to first responders for Vegas, uh, you know. For so to, so to clarify, your company makes the gloves. You're donating the that whole process and material bill to plus, that process, plus and then the proceeds plus the from proceeds. the sales of the gloves to, you know, to it. So so to the first responders. So right. yeah, there's a lot that goes into it, and it's it's been a really great program just to give back to the community. I mean, when that. When that shooting happened in Vegas, you know, it's it, it was a horrible, horrible thing. Yeah. But it, it unfortunately it kinda united a lot of people in Vegas, you know, it as did. far as first responders yeah. and you know, there's like, a huge community out for I mean, my whole family lives in Vegas. Like my uh, my entire family lives down there. And so that was a big deal to them. And I'm from there. I grew I twenty one years I lived in Vegas. So it's kinda like my heart, you know? Yeah. And seeing that happen. And then I actually have a good friends of ours were at that concert yeah running out Dude, no, steve, I, the, steve the organizer yeah. of takeover uh-huh. his family was there so yeah. i have friends right outside that were the there thing. and i have friends that got shot there and survived yeah wow like yeah no, no joke it was i mean santa carita is very small where i live but they all go to vegas and that yeah. particular event i swear to god my facebook was insane from all the people from santa carita that were at that event like it was like People ran out and called Ubers, dude, left all their stuff in the hotel, and Ubered straight back yep. home six hours away. Like, yep. st- out of World here. War II is going on. Yeah. We're out. Grab yeah. my family. Bounced. Yep. Like, yeah. it was gnarly, dude. Well, so, props so. to you for uh, for supporting that. You know, yeah, continuing well, support yeah, that, not, for, not ignoring for it because that, yeah. there's so many times that we'll do a charitable thing or a, a whatever, and it, and it has a lifespan of a month or you know yeah. six months or whatever. And we're what a few years ago or whatever now. Well, and, like I got to give uh, respect to my boss Ian. He's the one that that ran that program and is still doing it. So he's yeah. the man. Great job to my boss. My boss yeah. is you know I've, I've talked about him on the show. He's, yeah. he's the best guy I've ever worked for in my life, and he's just got a big heart and. He, d- he does a great job with it. So, so uh, if anybody's interested, uh, check them out. They're on the website, I, I believe, yeah, right? Yeah, And two, you can buy a, a kick-ass pair of gloves and, and support our first responders that way. Yep. yep. Um, and, uh, you know, Chad's uh, group of Deviant, um, you can find them al- online. Tell us a little bit of where we can find you, social media, website, and all those things. So we're on YouTube. We have uh, a, a, Facebook, a strong Facebook, strong Instagram following. Uh, we're not really into the Snapchat stuff yet like it's just not our thing i guess i guess we're just old i'm over it yeah, yeah <laughs> you know but yeah you can find us on uh, basically all the social stuff we have i think we even a pinterest page um we do all that wow. wait so you're not on snap but you got a pinterest yeah <laughs> yeah now i'm confused wait, <laughs> no, you, you, you got you're gonna have to ask matt chambers which does all of our all you know like all of our social stuff um, which you ought to have him on a show. Maybe you guys are gonna show up at the at the shop <laughs> yeah, one day. Yeah, Matt's Matt's a he's an interesting character, man. He's kind of like the mascot of Deviant. Like that guy takes his car out and sends it. He's the he's like the Bigfoot Sasquatch of like taking your car to the woods yeah, and like, doing crazy <laughs> stuff, dude. Right. Like yeah, I mean it, it, his car's in our booth, so you can actually see it gets used. It is beat, right? Dude, yeah, he sends that thing. Like, yeah, it, it's no joke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so, yeah. Every, everyone all, back so. at home, we all use our stuff. We don't we don't screw around and keep it nice. So yeah. that is the good so part about our stuff. So we don't, we don't build show cars like we don't. 
you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. Be I, nice it's here. very few and far between you find a show car in, in Idaho. <laughs> no, you don't. If anybody knows the uh, territory that we ride in, it is uh, just some tight trails, lots of trees, lots of, you know, rocks, mud, everything. You you name it. We'll have to go out and do some uh, do some shooting on some cars out in the woods. Yeah. Uh, we, we haven't got a chance to go out this year uh, much at all, so I, I think it'd be a great time. It was a hot summer. I it mean, was a crazy summer. I, I, didn't, I, I don't even think I got in my car. I drove to uh, Dairy Queen. With my mom, <laughs> right? That's what I did. Yeah, because oh, you can so drive hot. on the street up there, huh? Yeah. yeah, yeah, all on the street. It's licensed and stuff, so it's cool. All right, and then uh, Brent, where can we find Two One Two and everything you're doing? Two One Two Performance dot com. Um, two One Two Gloves on Instagram. Two One Two Performance on Facebook. Um, Fall Cowboy Deluxe. I post all their stuff. There's hyperlinks on my Instagram and social. Um, we're pretty much everywhere, you know? It's easy to find us. So just type in 212 Performance and we'll pop up. So. And uh, if you've been listening to the episode and hearing uh, the random zoo animals in the background, uh, Brent brought the entire zoo with him. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll throw a picture up of those guys. Yeah, we're big animal lovers in my family. So I have uh, three rescue birds with me, two dogs. and uh, Wait, wait, hold on. Three rescue birds is not like finches. We're talking about legitimate <laughs> yeah i have a blue and gold macaw that almost took a lady's finger off yesterday <laughs> uh, yeah don't don't just reach up and touch them just, just so mean? everyone yeah. knows just yeah. don't reach out and touch people's animals it yeah. just it's a bad idea it's dangerous. It is. yeah i mean the macaw is like 1400 pounds of biting strength like he will literally take your finger off they, they'll take a soda can or a beer can or something and just completely crush it shaken up i've seen like, him snap a, a a broom handle in half, yeah like just and i'm like oh maybe i should have got this bird no they're, <laughs> they're the jaws of life for sure so, um, anyways, uh, take over uh, San Hollow 2021. It's going to be an awesome week. We're at the very start of the whole thing today for this episode. So it was totally rad to have you guys uh, join us. I uh, hope everybody enjoyed the fact that we're sitting in the <laughs> UTV recording this outside. Got while, sh- uh, shout, shout out to our, our custom amp seats, dude, because uh, I'm not going to lie. These th- these it hasn't been a bad it, sit. It no, it's it, actually been really comfortable. Right? Yeah. 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 So. Absolutely. So, uh for uh, everybody watching and listening, uh, check us out on all the different uh, podcast channels, Spotify, YouTube, Apple, uh, and you can watch on YouTube for all the episodes. You can also go to our website with the show links where you can find link backs to all the different brands, products, things that uh, we've mentioned on the show. So until the next time, guys, so, peace. Hey, uh, surprise little episode right now is uh, those doors don't open from the inside, so let's go take these guys for a send. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Peace. <laughs>